Welcome to Rough Riders, I'm Jay Taylor. Back with another DIY video. Today we're in my basement. We're going to be adding an expansion tank to my uh, water heater. So, stick around. So today we're installing a thermal expansion tank on my water heater. I've got a failing thermal expansion valve uh, that I need to replace. Current code is to use an expansion tank, so that's what we're doing today. Let me take, give, show you a, a little bit closer look at what my problem is, uh, and then uh, we'll jump into the tools required and the parts that we, we need to do this job, and then we'll just walk you through step by step of what we're doing here. So this is the thermal expansion valve. There's basically a little ball valve in here that as the water heats up and expands, it, uh, if it creates too much pressure, pressure, it opens up this valve and then drains down this tube into the drain. That uh, valve is stuck open and so I have water leaking uh, out my uh, drain hose here. Let me show you that. So there's the water that's just continually dripping. So. Uh, that's going to lead to a very high uh, wastewater bill, so we want to go ahead and get this fixed. Okay, so you can see uh, what the problem was and why I needed to install the expansion tank. I did call some local plumbers to get an idea of how much it would cost to have this job done, and I was quoted anywhere from about $450 up to about $600. And so for me, um, you know, I wanted to see if I could do this myself. Not saying that, that those charges are unreasonable at all. Uh, you know, for somebody that doesn't have the tools, uh, the skills, or the wherewithal to go figure it out, um, you know, that's, that's calling up a licensed plumber is probably the right way to go. Uh, for me, it was just, you know what, I've done plumbing at my other house that worked out fine. I wanted to see if I could figure this out as well. I'm a fairly handy guy. I, you know, do all my own car repair and, and home repair and all of the other stuff. So, you know, I thought I would uh, give this job a, a try as well. And so I did extensive, extensive, extensive research on this. Now, I showed a picture of this or I posted a picture of this uh, in a local group that I'm a part of, a DIY group, and uh, I got roasted by licensed plumbers. Uh, I was called a hack. I was called this. This was called a hack job that it, you know, I installed the tank wrong, that, that this thing's going to blow up on me. At best, at best it's going to last maybe a year or two. Uh, before my butt, it floods my basement. And so, um, you know, based upon the comments, you would have thought that I kicked their dog and stole their girlfriends, you know. Um, I was quite surprised in a DIY group that I got that kind of feedback. But uh, I wanted to address some of the comments that were made, uh, you know, about this job and um, stuff that I just simply don't agree with. Uh, you know, there may be plumbers that end up watching this, uh, again, I'm not saying I know more than, than you guys do. Uh, I'm just saying I did a lot, a lot, a lot of research. I read through the Uniform Plumbing Code. I read through the International Plumbing Code. I read through the International Residential Code and the International Building Codes. I checked my local city code and my county code. Those actually referred back to the Uniform Plumbing Code. Uh, I read through the ANSI standards, the ASME standards, and the ASSE, which is now the ASSP standards. Uh, so I did, I did my homework before I even started this job because I wanted to make sure that it was going to last. So, uh, you know, I wanted to go through some of the comments that were, were made, you know, in case there's folks watching this uh, that may have similar feedback. Well, this is, what, this is what I discovered. So first off, I was told you can't use a flex hose like this uh, on a water heater connection that it doesn't meet code. Um, According to everything I read in the UPC and the IPC, and those are the ones I'm going to reference throughout the, these comments here, because those, one, are the most widely adopted standards here in the U.S., uh, based upon my research, and two, um, again, my city code and county code both referred back to the Uniform Plumbing Code. So, um, you know, as I said, I was told I can't use flex, ho flex hosing. Um, not according to uh, the Uniform Plumbing Code under Section 604. 13. Um, 
flex hoses are, are completely allowable provided they don't exceed 24 inches in length, which this doesn't, and provided they meet the ANSSI, ANSI and ASSE standards, um, according to UPC, and as long as they meet the ASME standards of the IPC all of which uh, this has been certified by all the industry standards body. So this flex hose is absolutely fine according to code. Next, I was told you can't use shark bite fittings within 18 inches of the water heater. Again, not correct according to the code I, I read. Uh, the 18 inch rule was actually part of that 604.13 uh, in the UPC, which says you can't use PEX tubing within 18 inches. Had nothing to do with shark bite fittings. So uh, speaking of fittings, I was told that one, fittings like these, uh, the shark bites, you know, at best last a year or two, uh, temporary fixes only. Um, based upon my experience, that is, that is incorrect. Um, this shark bite fitting right here, it was installed almost five years ago. I've got uh, shark bite fittings that I installed in my house in Austin almost seven years ago, and all of them are still holding. They're not leaking. They're, they haven't, lines haven't, lines haven't ruptured or anything like that. Nothing's flooded out. Uh, so um, they, they have held fine for me. But according to the UPC and the IPC, shark bite fittings are absolutely allowable for long-term use. Uh, it's covered under, in the UPC, it's a section, section 605.1.3.2 and 1.3.3. In the uh, IPC, it's covered under section 605.13.5 and, and six, six, section 605.13.7. Um, these are absolutely allowable for long-term use. Both of them are written almost exactly the same language, uh, and it's, it really talks about if you're going to use these type of fittings, they have to be installed correctly. Um, you know, you can't have any burrs on the, on, the, on the piping. You've got to make sure that you install them according to the manufacturer's directions and all of those things. It's got to have the right flexo seal on there and, and O-ring seal and everything, uh, which these do. So uh, these are absolutely covered for long-term use by both the UPC and the IPC, provided they're installed correctly. By the way, it gives you the same almost language when you solder in or braze in copper piping. You can use it provided you install it correctly. So uh, the language is consistent across all of the different piping and fittings and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I was told that the expansion tank was installed incorrectly, that it doesn't meet code, uh, that you can't install it horizontally. Well, again, not based upon my research. Uh, according to this image that I'm going to share right now, this is directly from the uh, Uniform Plumbing Codes uh, website that shows a horizontal installation is absolutely okay provided you support it with straps, as I've done here. It all, they, both the IPC and the UPC talk about the location of the expansion tank, that it must sit between the last backflow check valve or, or a pressure relief valve and the tank. Um, that you know on the cold water inlet side which is exactly where I have this mounted so um, based upon everything that I've read um, according to both the UPC and the IPC this installation is absolutely the code um, unless they're referring to some other code that I that I was not aware of or something that is in the UPC or the IPC uh, somewhere else that's not in the section on water heaters expansion valves hot water lines cold water lines uh, piping and fittings, uh, uh, backflow preventers and check valves and all of those sorts of things, uh, you know, e expansion tank uh, part, portion of the UPC, unless it's outside those sections, because I read it literally everything that I could find that was relevant to this install, then this should absolutely meet sort of, uh, uh, of any code requirements. So um, with that said, let me uh, show you the tools that I use to do this installation and the supplies you will need if you're going to DIY this job and uh, get you started. Here are the tools that I used to complete this job. I used a drill motor with a Phillips head bit on it to sink some screws. The pipe joint compound, pipe dope is what it's also called. A pipe cutter, some Teflon tape, a measuring tape, a water pressure gauge as well as an air or tire pressure gauge, a hammer, a set of channel locks, a crescent wrench, a small wrench for the plug, a screwdriver, a Dremel to clean out the uh, burrs on the on the pipe that I cut, 
and then a, a hose to drain the water heater. Okay, so if you're going to do it this way, uh, here are the supplies you're going to need from the hardware store. Uh, in total, it was about uh, about 85 bucks or so. Uh, it was the flex hose, so I spent uh, $12 on the flex hose. It has a threaded nut on one side to go onto the inlet side of the tank, and then a shark bite side on the other. Uh, this is a three-quarter inch hose. Some three-quarter inch copper tubing. I only needed a small section of it, uh, but I ended up having to buy the whole rod at nine bucks. Then the uh, shark bite, a uh, three-quarter inch, uh, three-quarter inch on the, the two sides, on the straight line sides, and then on the T, it was a three-quarter inch uh, threaded female. The tank, the strap, the tank was about $50, and the strap was like three, three bucks or so. And then this plug, which was uh, probably about three bucks. So uh, all in all, I spent about $85 in supplies to uh, hook up the tank this way. So for my installation, I've got a shark bite T that has a threaded uh, three-quarter inch to hold the tank. This will connect up to my uh, su supply valve, uh, the, the pipe that's coming off the supply valve. I'm going to put in a short little copper pipe and then come into the threaded thing. And then this end will just connect to the inlet on the water here. And then I will strap this up uh, to the ceiling to support the weight. Okay, the first step in the process is to measure the water pressure in my plumbing system. So I'm doing that here at the drain of the uh, water heater. I could also do this at a garden hose or something like that because I'm measuring the static pressure in, in my household plumbing. So I've just got a little pressure gauge here. Thread that on there and open the valve. And it looks like I'm measuring uh, right about 100 PSI. It's a little bit higher than what I, what I would have expected. Uh, typical residential plumbing uh, from your city uh, water supply is generally between 40 and, and 80 PSI. So next we're going to turn off the water supply to the water heater. So this is the cold inlet side and I've got a little ball valve right here. And I just got to close that off. With the water off, now I'm going to turn off the water heater, turn off the gas and I'm going to drain the water heater for that. I got a small little hose here. So I'm going to remove this drain tube and get this valve out of my way so that I can then cut this pipe. So with that out of the way, I can now uh, cut this pipe. I'm just using a pipe cutter. I'm going to cut as close to this solder joint as possible, but I want to make sure I get a nice clean cut. Yep, good clean cut. Now I'm going to remove the base. There's my old hose removed. So with the pipe cut, I'm ready to put the shark bite on. Shark bites have two ends. This is a slip in that you can uh, slide it up and down. It gives you room to to fit it in there and then they have the bite end and so I'm going to put the pipe here and you also want to make sure you've always got a nice clean cut for of any free of any burrs or anything like that uh, otherwise it, you'll end up with with leaking going on slip end on now and so now I just need to uh, uh, put my hose in here and thread it with Teflon tape and I should be good to go and then I can put the tank on. So let me, uh, I need to measure this to go get the right size hose because the one I picked up I thought I was going to need is too long. So I just need to go figure out what size hose I need here and go get that. Okay, we're back from the hardware store. We got the correct stuff we need. Uh, this was the shortest uh, flex pipe they had available. It's still a bit long so I'm going to trim this one back just a hair uh, just to give me a little bit more room. 
I'm also going to put some uh, Teflon tape and get this thing screwed in right now. So, screw the new one on. Put this thing there. So, you can see that is quite a bit longer than what I need. So, but I've got a little bit of flex in here, so I'm going to cut this thing back. With my pipe cutter. Put a little bit of bend in there. cut it right about there and see if that does it. It's a little bit of burring on the inside of the pipe of, uh, that I just cut and so I'm going to clean that up with a little bit of uh, emery cloth or sandpaper and uh, because there's a plastic piece in here that needs to seal up nice and tight so let me go uh, grab the right tools to clean that up and then we'll get that finished. And then the last piece is to install a plug up here since this uh, ball valve has a little bleeder uh, line on it from where the uh, previous uh, expansion valve was. Uh, I need to plug that up. So I got a little uh, 1 8 inch plug here that we're going to pop in there. Okay, so all my straight line work is done from my valve all the way down to my tank. I'm just about ready to put the uh, expansion tank in the uh, threaded T here. But before I do that, I need to pressurize the tank to match the water pressure in the house. So we need to basically pre-charge the tank. So now I need to get my air compressor or a bicycle pump and uh, get the tank pre-charged up to right around 100 psi. By the way, I did confirm uh, that that is the correct reading. That should be what I about what I'm getting here. So pre-charging tank is pretty easy. Uh, we just remove this cap. And you see there is a little valve on there, just like on your bicycle tires or on your car. So I'm just going to use a bicycle pump. This already has a meter on it. So with the tank pre-charged to 100 psi, I can put this cap back on. I did end up having to use my air compressor out in the garage anyway uh, because as I was pumping it up the bicycle pump couldn't handle it and it popped. Uh, so I had to finish it off on with my big tank anyway. So with that I'm ready to put some Teflon tape on and uh, put, this, uh, put this in. So we're going to go ahead and uh, open up that valve and see if we're dry. Okay, uh, we're not leaking anywhere, so we're good. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just turn on the gas and turn on the water heater, and uh, we should be up and running. So uh, some questions that you guys might have is, you know, I chose a five-gallon tank. Why did I choose a five-gallon tank? Um, a 2.5 or one of the 2.1-gallon tanks probably would have been sufficient for, for my uh, use, but I went ahead and went one size larger. One, because the price difference was only about $10. And two, uh, water uh, volume, the water volume can expand anywhere from 2% to 9%, uh, depending on how hot it is and atmospheric pressures and all that kind of stuff. And so um, with a 50-gallon tank, uh, a 2.1 would have worked, but I wanted to give myself a little bit of an extra margin there. Uh, so I went ahead and went with a larger tank. Like I said, it was only about 10 bucks more. So that's why I chose the tank I chose. Um, the... Uh, uh, you know, the rest of it was, you know, pretty straightforward. It's a pretty easy job. So, you know, that's all there is to it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And uh, if you have any questions, post those below. I'll get to those as quickly as I can. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Rough Riders. Mm -hmm.